because if nobody knows that you exist, nobody's going to be your customer. You give them a million ringgit, the first thing they're going to do is hire 20 more developers to build a better app. Trying to inculcate that into, transfer that into the brain of a founder is, is, is a challenging, challenging thing because yeah. they don't understand, right? Or close to that, 440,000 a month. By the following month, she crossed 500,000. If you're running a business, if you're doing something in, a, in the innovation space, mm. the problem for a lot of these companies is they don't pay attention enough to marketing. Mm. A lot of money goes to dev development, you know, shocks and theory. Oh, that, yeah, that's true. And then marketing when it comes, the marketing is the last thing to think about. <laughs> T- completely wrong. Because if nobody knows that you exist, mm. nobody's going to be your customer. But I think that's a big issue with it is, tech, it is. tech companies. Yes. Especially if the co-founders or the main founders are yeah. very tech-based. Exactly. I feel like their focus is too much on tech. I mean, even a few yeah. days ago at one of our networking events, right, I was talking to some of these entrepreneurs. Uh, the issue with tech co-founders. If a, a startup is built up of, let's say, two or three co-founders and they're all tech background, you Fail. give them a million ringgit, the they first fail. thing they're going to do, what are they going to do? You give them a million ringgit, the first thing they're going to do is hire 20 more developers to build a better app. But if you give a business person a million ringgit, they might think, you know what, let's spend this much on development, let's do this much on hiring people, let's spend this much on marketing, let's grow the business. And if you give it to the tech co-founder, let's hire another 20 developers, let's hire a CTO, let's hire a UI UX designer. I've drilled this (laughs) into the entrepreneurs, the founders, the business owners, you know, in in the course of the past 15 plus years running all these programs and Mm -hmm. stuff. I come from also that marketing domain. Mm. I've had about seven, eight companies within that space, PR company, branding company, all that stuff. You know, marketing, advertising, the whole nine yards, right? I understand the importance and what that does to a business. Mm. Trying to inculcate that into, or transfer that into the brain of a founder is, is, is a challenging, challenging thing because yeah. they don't understand it. So as a business, mm. you know, you need the business people, people who are, you know, experienced in building and growing and scaling businesses. That's a whole different domain yeah. and science to it. Mm. Right. Yeah, because I always tell people, right, don't get too attached to the product. Yeah, no. Because the product is just a very small component of the whole business. Yeah. You're building a business here. You're yeah. not just about look at, at the, the yeah. growth and failure of Jewel Vapes. Same thing. Yeah. I mean, the product can change, right? If yeah, you build a business change. today, you could be selling a software. Five years down the road, yeah. you could be selling a hardware. You, you don't know, right? Yeah. The product can always change. Or the software that you're doing today, in two years, you could pivot. You look at the origin else. stories of some famous brands like Samsung and stuff like that. They didn't mm. start off making electronics. Lamborghini started making like, farming trucks, yeah, yeah. farming tractors. Yeah. If you're a startup founder trying to target the wrong audience or your product market fit mm. is wrong, you're not going to see the conversion. You don't yes. see the conversion. Your numbers are not impressive. Mm. Unit economics and metrics are not great. Mm. What do you think the investor is going to respond? How do, how do you think they're going to respond? Mm. Let, me, let me give you an example, right? I have one Machikia business easily, you know, started with a small amount of capital. When we interviewed her for the program, she was already crossing half a million a month mm. revenue. Mm. I can't even say the same for a cradle funded mm. startup. Mm. It's no longer Making like that SME amount, though. yeah, mm. a cradle funded startup. Mm. Whole year revenue doesn't even match one year. Mm. Uh, sorry, one month of my micro entrepre- entrepreneur startup because they started less than a year. They would. When I interviewed her, she was only 11 months old as oh, a business. Haven't even completed that. Not one even year. one year. Started with oh, 1,000 ringgit. She was making products that was like a balm for babies and stuff like that. Mm, all right. right? Grew her business phenomenally. Mm. Within 11 months, when we interviewed her, making half a million already, right? Or close to that, 440,000 a month. By the following month, she crossed 500,000. If you like this content, don't forget to click the like and subscribe button below. As YouTubers now, you have to keep doing that, right? Like, share and subscribe to the channel.